Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. Today we'll be going over part one of the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is a group of subcortical nuclei. The word basal uh, is used because they're found near the base of the brain. And the word ganglia, however, is a, ba uh, a bit of a misnomer because the word ganglion is used to describe the peripheral nervous system and the word nucleus uh, is more appropriate in this case. The grouping of these nuclei is related to uh, their function instead of uh, their anatomical location. The components of the basal ganglia uh, are not part of a single anatomical unit but rather are spread deep within the brain. And when we say basal ganglia, we typically think of the structures such as the caudate, the putamen, and the globus pallidus. But because of their functional similarities, the, there are additional functional nuclei such as the subthalamic nuclei and the substantia nigra are also included in the basal ganglia unit. The main components of the basal ganglia, however, as defined functionally, are the striatum, which comp uh, is comprised of the caudate and the putamen, and they're together considered the striatum. And we will uh, consider them as one unit uh, in this discussion here. The caudate here and the putamen here are separated by the internal capsule which then descends into the midbrain to becomes the cruz cerebri. And here you have a coronal view of different sections of the brain that demonstrates why some of the structures are called the way they are. The striatum is the combination of the caudate and the putamen uh, because of their striated appearance over here. Moving further back, uh, we're starting to see the globus pallidus to come into view, and that together the globus pallidus and the putamen are shaped like a lens and hence is called the lentiform nucleus. And notice how the subthalamus, the subthalamic nuclei sits directly underneath the thalamus and the substantia nigra sits just behind the cruz cerebri. Before I go into the specifics of each component within the basal ganglia, let's review the overall pathways that we learned in med school. And I found this PDF file really helpful uh, with the link listed here, and I'll copy that in the description below. Uh, I found this file really helpful and so I copied a lot of their figures. Overall, there are two pathways, a direct pathway and an indirect pathway. And there are different modifiers to turn the system up or down. And more specifically, uh, the substantia nigra uh, dopamine system and as well as the acetylcholine system. And so let's go over each of these in more detail. Now the thalamus is a tonically excitatory structure. The ultimate goal for the direct and indirect pathways uh, are to increase and to decrease the excitatory thalamic input, respectively. And the part of the thalamus is the VA, VL, ventral anterior and ventral lateral uh, motor thalamus. Um, and we covered uh, these structures in the thalamic uh, videos. Now, first in the direct pathway, the striatal cells project directly to the globus pallidus internus, and hence is called the direct loop. In terms of the pathway, it starts with the cortex, and with the cor cortical striate fibers, the, this fi these fibers are excitatory and uses glutamate as neurotransmitters. And when they are activated, 
these cortical projections excites the striatal neurons. And the striatal neurons goes to the globus pallidus internus and is inhibitory and uses GABA. The globus pallidus internus then projects to the VAVL motor thalamus. And these neurons are also inhibitory with GABA. So the cortical signal excites the striatal neurons, which results in more inhibition of the striatum to the globus pallidus. And more inhibition means less inhibition to the motor thalamus. And since the motor thalamus receives less inhibition, the VAVL cells will increase their firing. And this decrease in inhibition is called disinhibition. So the end result of the cortical excitatory input to the striatal neurons of the direct pathway is to increase the excitatory drive from the thalamus to the cortex. And so you can think about this pathway as turning the motor system up. And that is the cells in the VAVL nucleus and the motor cortex increase their firing. And this results in increased activity in the cortical spinal tract and eventually the muscles. Now let's direct our attention to the indirect pathway. In this pathway, the striatal cells project indirectly to the globus pallidus via the globus pallidus externus and the subthalamic nucleus and hence it is called the indirect pathway. In this pathway, the cortical fibers excites the striatal neurons, which then project to the globus pallidus externus, and this increase in activity of the GABAergic striatal neurons will lead to a decrease in activity of the globus pallidus externus. And the function of the globus pallidus externus is also an inhibitory neuron using GABA. And the GABAergic cells in the globus pallidus externus will inhibit cells in the subthalamic nucleus. So the decrease in the activity in the globus pallidus externus results in less inhibition of the cells in the subthalamic nucleus. And that is the subthalamic neurons are disinhibited. And so the subthalamic nucleus will increase their activity to the globus pallidus internus. The projection from the subthalamic nucleus to the globus pallidus internus is uh, excitatory. And so the increased activity in the subthalamic nucleus results in more excitation to the cells of the globus pallidus internus. And so the end result of this indirect loop is an increase in the activity of the GABAergic cells in the globus pallidus internus that projects to the motor thalamus. In other words, it is an increase in the inhibition of the thalamic neurons, and the indirect pathway therefore turns down the, the motor activity. So now we add in to the two important neuromodulatory systems. And each of these systems will differentially affect the direct and indirect pathways in different ways. So first, let's add in the substantia nigra uh, pathway to the system. Dopamine uh, is used uh, in these systems, and it's produced in the pars compacta of the substantia nigra, noted by the substantia nigra PC. Uh, and I should mention here that the other part of the substantia nigra is the pars reticulara. And you can almost always group the globus pallidus internus, GPI, together with the substantia nigra uh, reticulata. Uh, 
and the dopaminergic uh, system is uh, in the substantia nigra uh, pars compacta uh, portion. So essentially the um, dopamine has an excitatory effect on the direct pathway via the D1 receptor, whereas the dopamine has an inhibitory effect on the indirect pathway via the D2 receptors. So in other words, the direct pathways, which turns up the motor activity, is excited by the dopamine, while the indirect pathway, which turns down motor activity, is inhibited. And so both of these effects leads to an increase in the motor activities. Now let's turn our attention to the other system, which is the cholinergic system. Uh, the, these are the cholinergic interneurons within the striatum. And they also synapse on the direct and indirect pathways. The cholinergic system, the action of these uh, neurons are the direct opposite effects of the dopamine system. So the acetylcholine will directly inhibit the direct pathway and excites the indirect pathway. And so the end result is a decrease in the motor activities. And so this is uh, just a summary of what we just talked about. And it's very important that you memorize these pathways because there invariably will be a couple questions on these. Now let's put these pathways into real life scenarios. And damage to specific basal ganglia structures can cause two different classes of syndromes. One type is characterized by a decreased movement uh, and is considered hypokinetic movement disorders. The classical example is uh, Parkinson's disease, and that's mediated by a substantia nigra destruction. The other type is characterized by an increase in movement, uh, which is called the hyperkinetic movement disorders. The classical examples are uh, Huntington's disease from destruction of the caudate nucleus and uh, hemibolismus from destruction of the subthalamic nucleus. Now let's consider a case in a Parkinson's patient with a lesion in the substantia nigra pars compacta. It affects both the direct and indirect pathway and what essentially the lesion does in the substantia nigra lesion is that it takes away the excitatory dopaminergic drive on the direct pathway. And recall that the direct pathway turns up motor activity. And so when you take away the dopamine, activity in the direct pathway goes down. And also compounding this, the reduction in the dopamine facilitation, the acetylcholine interneurons are still inhibiting the striatal uh, cells. And so there is a double whammy on the direct pathway. And the loss of the excitation from the dopamine and an ongoing and now unopposed inhibitory acetylcholine input, the end result is more inhibition uh, reaching the VAVL motor uh, thalamus as well as the motor cortex. And so therefore, act, uh, there is less motor activity. In the case of the uh, indirect pathway, the substantia nigra has the exact opposite effects. And recall that uh, dopamine normally inhibits the indirect pathway and that the 
indirect pathway normally turns down motor activity. And when you take away the dopamine inhibition on the uh, indirect pathway, this increases uh, its activity. The um, loss of dopaminergic inhibition to the indirect pathway is compounded by the now unopposed excitatory action of the cholinergic interneurons that drive the indirect um, pathway up. And so therefore the um, substantia nigra compacta lesion will increase the indirect pathway activity which turns down motor activity. And so the end result of both of these pathways is a reduction in the activity of the VAVL motor um, uh, thalamus as well as the motor cortical neurons. And this results in hypokinetic symptoms such as akinesia, which is no movement, or bradykinesia, or slow movement, as is, as, you could, uh, as is seen in the case uh, of the Parkinson's disease. In the case of hemibilismus, uh, we all know that the uh, condition is characterized by a wild flinging movement of the body, and it is results uh, of the lesion in the subthalamic nucleus, uh, typically from a stroke. The subthalamic nucleus normally uh, increases the inhibition of the palatal uh, VAVL projection uh, as because it's in the pathway of the indirect pathway. And so losing the excitatory input to the globus pallidus internus means less inhibition reaching the motor thalamus. And you can uh, also think of it as the direct pathway is still turning the activity up, but the indirect path, uh, pathway is gone. And so this means that there is an increased VAVL drive to the cortex, which means that there is more motor activity. And so uh, the end result is an uncontrollable hyperactivity of the motor system. Similarly, in the case of Huntington's disease, which is characterized by involuntary choreoform movement, uh, which show up as rapid, involuntary, and purposeless jerks. Um, we'll go over more in detail of this disease in future videos. But the initial cause of these uncontrollable movement is a loss of uh, GABAergic neurons in the striatum that projects only to the globus pallidus externus, which is the beginning of the indirect pathway. And this loss of neurons is, uh, can be seen on an MRI as the degeneration of the caudate nucleus. The um, loss of this inhibition on the indirect pathway, which uh, turns down the motor activity, means that the VAVL um, uh, motor thalamus is turned up, and therefore so will the motor cortex. And this leads to an uncontrollable hyperactivity of the motor system. And in addition to the loss of the striatal GABAergic um, cells um, of the indirect pathway, the striatal cholinergic uh, cells also begins to die. The loss of both these types of cells causes less inhibition of the VAVL uh, neurons and therefore increases motor output. This is uh, part one of the basal ganglia video. These are my references, and I hope you find these helpful. We'll see you next time.